Hi friends, welcome. I hope you are doing okay. In this video, we are going to use state as the one source of truth for these email and password text fields. As you can see, I already went ahead and made the UI for this component. If you're curious about the UI code, I'll put a link in the description below. And by the end of this video, you should be able to see the um, email and password printed out to the console when I click this button. Now, in this video, I won't be going over validation, but I will be going over the really key concepts um, that React uses and the lifecycle method and um, form components. Before we start coding in React, I wanted to open up an example that we used in React Native last year. So last year, we used something called class components to make uh, components that had state. And so you set this.state equal to some variable. In this example, it's called count, and you gave it an initial value of zero. Then when you wanted to change this variable, you had to use a function called this.setState, which took in an object of the new state that you wanted to replace over here. Nowadays, in 2020, we no longer use class components in modern React. Sometimes people do prefer class components, but for the most part, people much prefer using functional components for the following reason. They really like hooks. Hooks solve a lot of the problems that class components couldn't solve in 2019. So for example, this is a hook using the useState function. And instead of having these two different functions, this one-liner basically returns those two and um, you can just use them wherever in your component down over here in the return um, uh, value. So let me expand. In this example, this is setting a const count equal to zero. You no longer need to use um, this dot state dot count it is purely just count called count now that is why down here it says count and then it just uses the variable over here and it's wrapped in um like these brackets because this is how we use javascript variables inside react components and then this set count is a function that basically does what this dot set state does, except that it's specific to this value. So if I call set count one, it is going to make count equal one. Okay, so over here we have our touchable opacity and on press it increments the count by one. It is using this function over here called onPress, where it calls set count, where it takes in the previous count and it returns previous count plus one. Even though this says previous count, it is still the same count variable over here. It's just uh, renamed for the sake of this function. So that is how this functional component works. And you can see why it's so much better because in the past you had to use all these lines of code just to do what this does in basically one line of code um, other than the places where you have to use set count. And so you can have multiple um, variables or hooks within a functional component. So you can set another va variable here, let's say um, name, and then I set set name equal to use state Carmel. Then I can just use my new variable over here, and I'm just going to put name, name. and it should render. So um, I wanted to show you the React Native example before jumping to the React example, um, just because I think this makes the connection clear or more clear 
what is going on when we use this um, new syntax. Now, this is not the only hook that functional components use. Over here in the documentation, there's an entire hooks API reference where they have basic hooks such as use state, use effect, and use context. But these additional hooks are definitely useful in certain cases, especially use memo when you want to memoize a value. React is um, really versatile in terms of um, what you can do when you need to retrieve data or change data. But um, before I get too theoretical, let's jump back into our React code. Over here in my React code, I have a very simple login form component that has a grid, and within that grid has two text fields and a button. So visually, that is um, this section over here, email, username, password, and the continue button. So over here, I'm going to use use state to keep track of the values within these two text fields. I go up here and I import from React. And then I define my username and variable buttons at the top of this functional component. For now, I set it to an empty string. Next up, I set the value in these text fields to the username and password. And then I want to use my set username and set password functions um, to update this username and password variables whenever um, people enter in text over here. To do that, I use a prop called onChange, which takes in a, an event. And in here, I'm going to set username to event.target.value. And the reason why this is called event is because the event interface, um, which is like handles click events and other events, but this is how you use the onChange function to set the username. And I'm going to basically use the same thing in my password field. And even though this is um, the same event.target.value, it actually represents the two different events. So this is one event, me clicking into this text field, and this is another event, me clicking into the password field. So now the text fields um, should work as you would expect them to, but right now we have no way of actually doing something with the data. So here in this button, I'm just going to add an on click and I'm going to um, create what's called a lambda. And I'm just going to console.info and then create an object. Oh, sorry, all the info's crowding it, but I'm gonna um, print out the username and the password like so. So when I just click it, as you can see right now, it's empty. But now um, it updates whenever I um, change the text here. It'll update and show in the console. Cool. So this is a very, very basic example of using um, React hooks to keep track of um, the state within our form here. This form is an example of a controlled component. Here in the documentations um, for forms, it uses um, a class component to exemplify what a controlled component is, but um, you can think of a controlled component as 
which is something that uses state to keep track of um, the single source of truth or wherever the username and password values live. You can use something within this onClick function, such as um, creating a using Firebase to log in, but I'll leave that to another tutorial.